This idea that like, oh, when we voted for Biden in 2020, we were voting for Kamala. No, you weren't. You were voting for Biden. And here's the other thing. You weren't even voting for Biden. You were voting for not Trump. This is something that we've discussed several times on this show. And we will continue to discuss because it has not stopped being true. Not only did you not vote for Kamala in 2020, but you didn't even vote for Biden in 2020. You voted for not Trump. The Democrats would have voted for anyone that wasn't Trump, just like they will vote for anyone that isn't Trump this election, which is why it didn't really matter who the Democrats put up as the replacement for Joe Biden this cycle. Uh, The Democrats were going to rally behind her. They were going to feign enthusiasm and support. And they were basically like, this is this is kind of like, it's like a self gaslighting. They have pretended to be excited about Kamala for so long at this point and so hard that they have somehow tricked themselves into thinking they're excited about Kamala. It's like one of those things where like, if enough people say someone is popular, that person becomes popular. So you can kind of like speak something into existence. They manifested somehow Kamala Harris's popularity. And they manifested it by telling you that she's popular. And if it, again, if enough people tell you Kamala Harris is popular, you start to believe it. Because they have the resources and all the necessary strings to pull and the budget and everything where they can afford, you know, Rihanna could put out an album and they can, they can put a multi-million dollar marketing campaign behind that. And if a multi-million dollar marketing campaign is put behind something, you're going to know about it. You're going to see it on an ad before you walk, before your YouTube video. You're going to see it on a billboard. You're going to see it on commercials at the Super Bowl, whatever. You're going to know about it. It's going to be trending on Spotify. You're probably going to listen to a song or two. You're not going to be able to avoid it is the point. You're not going to be able to avoid what they want you to see. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to like it. It just means you're going to know about it. And now you have everybody on all sides, Tim Dillon, Joe Rogan. Oh, man, she's winning. She's I'm here's here's the paradoxical thing about that. She's not more popular because she's more popular. She's not more popular because you are paying attention. She's more popular because you are being told that everyone else is paying attention. So you're sitting there going, wow, everyone else is paying attention. Everyone's paying attention to Kamala. She must be popular. But everyone in the country is sitting here thinking that everyone else is super excited. So while they're like mildly excited and just kind of happy it's not Biden anymore, but they're not like, over the hills with joy, you know, heel tapping down the street and singing show tunes about the fact that Kamala's taken over. Everybody themselves is not feeling that. Everybody themselves is very much like, if you are on that side of things, you're sitting there like, okay, yeah, cool. cool. It's not Biden. All right, let's see if we can win this thing. That's like the height of emotion for everyone. But they're all sitting there thinking that the guy next to them is super stoked. In two weeks, they've managed to convince you that Somehow, all these new voters are coming out of the woodworks to vote for Kamala. I said it on the, uh, two episodes ago on the weird episode that uh, not a single person, not a single person that is voting for Kamala, that is posting on social media about how enthusiastic they are about Kamala, uh, how rejuvenated and revitalized they are, their bumper sticker, their lawn sign, all that bullshit. Not a single one of those people wasn't already going to vote for Biden. That is probably the most important point that needs to be made. In my opinion, that is the case. I have not met anyone. I have not spoken to anyone that was not going to vote for Biden that is now going to vote for Kamala. The narrative, what you're supposed to believe, what you're supposed to believe is that a bunch of those people exist and that is what is causing the shift. 
because now we have all the Biden supporters plus all these new Kamala supporters that have been brought into the fold that weren't Biden supporters, but they're Kamala supporters. Um, again, if you're a person that was that is legitimately going to sit here and tell me that you on November whatever this year were not going to walk into that poll and vote for Biden. If you can honestly say that that's the case, you were not going to vote for Biden. But now you are going to vote for Kamala. If you can honestly say that, email me. Leave a comment in the chat. One guy who's listening. Did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you exist. I think you're made up. We're supposed to believe that a bunch of RFK support has moved over to Kamala. Who, who on the fucking planet, who was an RFK supporter two weeks ago that is now voting for Kamala? Are you serious? Are you serious? I'm supposed to fucking believe that? RFK ran as a Democrat in the beginning of this election cycle. He was so hated by the Democratic Party and the media establishment that they did nothing but put out propaganda pieces about him, call him a nuts, crazy anti-vaxxer, brain worm, lunatic, whatever guy. They pushed him out. And now he's running third party independent. All the people that were that were entertaining and, and platforming RFK were people on the right. I don't know of anyone on the left that was a Kennedy supporter. I think the furthest left you got as an RFK supporter was a pure centrist. Therefore, the Venn diagram of RFK supporters and Kamala supporters is two separate circles. That's my point. It always has been, and it continues to be, two separate circles. The Venn diagram of people who like Trump and people who like RFK is pretty big. It includes me. I like both of them. I like RFK and I like Trump. Virtually every person I know who likes Trump doesn't have a very, I mean, they have a, at least a neutral opinion about RFK. They don't dislike him is my point. But most people are like, yeah, I fuck with Kennedy too. I'm going to vote for Trump, but I fuck with Kennedy. And even most uh, Kennedy supporters are like, ah, I guess if I really had to, I'd vote for Trump maybe, or probably just no one. But it's not like they're going to vote for Kamala if, they, if they're not going to vote for, like, I guess my point is, is that the idea that somehow when you have two candidates, Kamala and Kennedy, whose Venn diagram of crossover is not existent. There is no crossover. And now you're going to explain that A, there's a bunch of people that were, were not going to vote for Biden, but are now going to vote for Kamala in the Democratic Party. We're supposed to believe that that exists. And we're also supposed to believe that there's a bunch of people that were going to vote for Kennedy who are now going to vote for Kamala. Neither one of those things exist. Stop letting them tell you that bullshit. Who are all these mythical people that we hear about every day? These mythical people that apparently exist. No one's ever met them. No one's ever met the guy who's like, you know, I still can't make up my mind on Trump. Can't decide if I like him or not. Really? You can't decide? The guy's been a high profile celebrity since the fucking 80s. He's been the most popular person in America since 2016. When he, announced, when he ran for president the first time. The most vilified, demonized, polarizing person in America. And, I'm, and he's run in the past two elections, going on his third election. And I'm supposed to believe that there are not only maybe one or two, no, a, a, a quantifiable, non-negligible uh, contingency in this country that are undecided Trump voters. Sorry. No, sorry, no. They don't exist. The undecided Trump voters don't exist. The never Biden, but yes, Kamala voters don't exist. The RFK to Kamala voters don't exist. None of these voters exist. The hype and support and enthusiasm for Kamala only exists 
In the same way uh, Peter Pan exists. Or, or not, what is it? Tinkerbell? You got to give her attention or else she fades away? I don't know the fucking thing. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. You know what I mean, though. It only exists as long as we continue to pretend it exists. This hype behind Kamala. It only exists until she is actually forced to become real and actually answer questions. And that's why they haven't done that. 